So now that we've moved off of that full RT experience, and we've perhaps explained <laughs> why it might not be the best choice if you have something like an RTX 3060, uh, I think perhaps we should move on to optimize settings for the more mid-range class of GPU in the world that's not really going to be achieving those very top end full RT settings. So I think right. probably here with respect to mid-range GPUs, we're probably looking at hardware that's starting at or maybe slightly below in that range with basically the premium console GPUs, so the PS5 and Series X, and probably extending to something like an RTX 4070 or something in that range, basically GPUs that are below the high end, basically in the market. So what kind of optimized settings do those kinds of systems need to actually have a really good experience in Black Myth Wukong, or at least as good of an experience as can be expected with the game at the moment? So like a lot of Unreal Engine 5 titles, I think you require small nips and tucks here and there to almost nearly every setting to actually get a good, get a good appreciation for this. There is a benchmark that ships with the game and they shipped it also as a separate EXE. But after having played the game for a bit, I don't think it actually gives a completely nuanced view of what the settings exactly do to different visual phenomena. Uh, it can give you a good sense of generic performance the game will have, but it doesn't show you actually what some of the degradations will be uh, mm -hmm. if you start adjusting things. Or it won't even show you the performance of every single thing. So you needed to play the game to get a better idea of that. And that's what Mohammed did, and I also did too on a different GPU. He did his testing on an RTX 3070, and I did mine primarily on an RTX 2070 Super. And there's some conclusions there, but I think I'm going to go straight into the individual settings first. And I'm going to kind of go from slightly least important to most important at the end. Uh, mm -hmm. The first thing that I checked out was post effects quality. And here, it, if you just like watch a cutscene play out, you actually won't notice the difference too much until you get down to very like the lowest setting. Uh, but if you stop and look, you'll see that uh, below high, uh, things like bloom are reduced and lens flares are turned off. Yes. But when you go from like cinematic to around high, you'll see that there is actually a slight degradation in depth of field quality, but it is actually extremely minor. Uh, as a result of that minor dip in quality, uh, I think the 4% win in performance I was able to see as measured by Mohammed here is a great win. So definitely use high for this setting. I was looking at these post effects pictures for depth of field and I was having a hell of a time trying to pick between them, even with still shots. So for <laughs> sure, it's not very much of an impact there. And yeah, I think PS5 is probably using a setting in line with the high settings preset, possibly very high, uh, I think here, because it does retain those light shafts. I think PS5 is probably something in that range. Yeah. And now another setting that I found uh, to be not so constant consequential is the texture quality setting. Uh, here, when you compare them side by side, just looking at the ground, for example, as we can see here, uh, on an RTX 3070, even outputting at 4K, um, you'll see that the quality only starts to get noticeably lower around high, but even then it's subtle, and then it gets uh, mm -hmm. more noticeable around medium and low. But uh, Mohammed playing the game here at even like the very high or cinematic quality where there's no discernible difference at all, um, it wasn't affecting performance at all. There wasn't extra induced hitching. Uh, and so here I just recommend the very high or cinematic quality. I, I think very high is completely the same. So I just used that when I was doing my testing. But here, uh, texture quality doesn't seem to be a big issue on an eight gigabyte GPU at all. And I wholly recommend everyone to just use like very high or so. Mm -hmm. So shadow quality, this is one of our first larger wins and I want to kind of get it out, out of the way first because I think the uh, visual consequences aren't so important. The game is using cascaded shadow maps as Oliver and I have talked on our respective videos. And when you get down to around high, as you can see the still image here, or sorry, this still camera footage here, uh, there is a slight degradation to the standing quality. But it, the thing is, it's already not very good anyway if you understand what I mean. So the, right. the it's already not great, but there are small degradation in quality. You're getting an 18% performance win there on high versus cinematic. And yes, as the camera moves forward, as you're seeing some of these other comparisons here, there is a slight difference in the kind of noticing of the cascade. Um, 
moving with the camera, but I think an 18% performance win versus slightly uh, more noticeable cascade transitions is worth it for anything that is, you know, this game's heavy enough as is, might as well try and get some performance out of it. So definitely use high for shadow quality here. Yeah, to me, none of the CSM settings are that exciting or particularly great looking. I think in part because of the aggressiveness of that closest shadow cascade, which actually reminds me of another game that came out earlier this year, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which also had a similar issue. I don't think it looks that great to me. Um, mm -hmm. And also because, not to spoil anything, but the game's foliage doesn't animate that much unless you engage some other settings a little bit higher. So you're not seeing too much of that shadow aliasing because there's just not that much movement in the shadow maps. Correct. Uh, speaking of vegetation, uh, vegetation quality here uh, on this side by side, you can see this is one area where the PS5 pruned it looked like. And yes. I'd also recommend pruning this a bit too. On the high setting, uh, on an average view distance, uh, it didn't actually super affect the amount of vegetation you can see in terms of density, uh, but it had a nice 5% performance win there. Uh, and I think that's worth it. Going to medium or low, though, I feel like is a, a bridge too far, so I wouldn't recommend that. Now, there's another setting that affects vegetation, and that's the view distance quality. And since this game isn't using Nanite for its vegetation, this will affect the LOD distance scaling of that vegetation. So vegetation quality is affecting the density, while view distance quality is affecting how quickly they transition in terms of distance to a uh, a worse LOD. And here I found that there is a 2% performance win uh, by going to high, which I think it didn't look that different when moving uh, in a side-by-side. -side. Like as you can see here, the difference is small, so might as well get that performance win. Uh, but I said not to go any lower essentially because between medium and high, as you're seeing in this footage here, moving back and forth, there is a noticeable difference in how close to the camera the LOD transition will occur. And I, I found it just like, once again, a step too far on medium. Okay, so this is probably one of the largest visual differences and performance differences in the game, and this is from the visual effects quality setting. Now, on PS5, we did see that the game was degrading quality in the opening cinematic and that cinematic prologue area with regard to the really cool fluid volume fog particle system that's going on there. Yes. Really cool effect very expensive uh so in a side by side as i'm showing in the stills right here um if you go down to high it's like 22 percent win in performance not so big of a degradation in quality i would argue uh mm -hmm. that could be a good win but there's a 33 percent win by going down to medium and on these gpus in the moments when this effect occurs it is extremely expensive uh the opening <laughs> intro as we'll see later on can be dropping even heavily on the medium setting so this this effect is used very i wouldn't say sparsely throughout the game it is definitely there quite often mm -hmm. enough but i think it is worth it to go down to medium here in regards to performance for mid-range gpus now, unfortunately, there is a side effect of going down to high or medium for this setting, uh, essentially when you're in any of the forested areas of the game. If you look up uh, at any of the larger trees, you'll notice that at the high setting and lower, they'll stop moving. Right. And I think uh, this is a hard setting to balance as a result of that. Like I technically would like those trees to be moving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they're, you know, but, uh, the win from medium or high, and I'm going to say use medium here uh, for the setting in regards to when those fog particles show up is definitely worth it in spite of the visual degradation from it, uh, just because this game's so heavy when that happens. So I would recommend medium here in spite of that. Yeah, I'd really like it if those settings could be decoupled because they don't really, I mean, to most gamers, they wouldn't really have an intuitive link there. And I think they'd want to be able to change those settings differently because it, you know, visual effects doesn't have that much of an effect no pun intended, in the general game, but it has a big effect in that opening scene and perhaps some other scenes throughout the game. I actually took a little bit of a crack at PS5 here because I was a little bit curious because I do really like those high-end visual effects with the volumetrics. And it looks closest to high, which would also correspond with the lack of foliage animation for the trees on the PlayStation 5. So I suspect that it's probably using that setting or perhaps a custom setting close to it, but probably that setting. Yeah, I mean, that sounds reasonable to me. And also, you know, as we saw back then, the intro to the game was 
supremely heavy also on PS5. So Very, I think they, yes. they, they made a, a good choice there uh, in regards to what they were doing. Hair quality is the next setting. It technically will win less than the previous setting I was talking about, visual effects. But here in this, you know, this nice side by side lineup of the various settings, it starts to really degrade on the low setting, which I do not recommend. Um, but uh, at around high, there was an appreciable performance increase uh, that was measured as 12% in this one scene here. And I honestly am having a hard time seeing the difference. So it must be a uh, smaller subpixel detail that is not showing so well. Uh, this is a setting though, where if you're going through the benchmark, you'd be troubled to even notice uh, the difference uh, in visual quality and or performance because the hair uh, quality setting mainly affects characters that use a dynamic, like moving subsurface scattered hair that the game applies to certain uh, certain bosses usually and the the benchmark won't tell you much about that so definitely use the high setting here uh, you're going to appreciate it because as we saw in the ps5 version when you get close to a lot of these bosses they get really heavy all of a sudden <laughs> yeah. the frame rate starts to lurch because they have a ton of effects associated with them and they get more detailed the closer you are and this will help you in those boss moments to get a better frame rate yeah, I think that's totally true. And like these shots are great, but I also kind of wonder how they would look. Obviously, you couldn't match this, but getting a face full of this guy, you know, it really <laughs> does dramatically tank the frame rate on PlayStation 5 across all the modes, basically, that I saw. It's pretty, pretty nasty. It's actually the probably the biggest performance drop that I saw in my hours with the game. But I think one aspect of this, this is sort of interesting to me, having a little bit of experience here with different versions of the game, is how DLSS is cleaning up that fur rendering. Because it's not doing an amazing job, but it's doing a lot better than FSR. And actually, I took a look at TSR after we recorded our PlayStation 5 piece. And on PC, it actually is not doing a very good job with this hair either. So right. in this case, that PC settings uh, really boost here that you're looking for, I think, is to combine any of the settings medium or above with DLSS because it's doing a way better job, or maybe XCSS, it's doing a way better job than those non-machine learning based techniques. Yeah, this is, this is a case here where I think FSR is always has trouble with things like hair, but TSR can be pretty good, but where you're seeing like a vintage of Unreal Engine here, that's it seems to be version 5.0 from, from yeah. what you can see from inspecting the AXE. Also just some other quality aspects here where TSR did improve quality over time. So that's something we're not getting in this title, apparently. Um, another thing to mention about hair quality, just kind of out there, is that uh, this is a, a setting that requires restarts for differences to show, mm -hmm. and as a result, performance to show differences. So this is one of the few in the game that does require restart, along with full RT. Um, reflections quality. Now, the game appears to be using SDF reflections, and here, when you go from cinematic to very high, you really won't be seeing a difference. Uh, it doesn't seem to be actually doing much, but from very high to high, there is a 7% performance uplift, but there's then an introduced instability into reflections out of screen space. Uh, you're just gonna see SSR otherwise, but out of screen space, you'll start seeing this jiggling uh, that's being shown off here. Now the improvement to reflection quality uh, and the difference that this setting will have, it's going to really depend how much water you tend to see on screen. And so this is a little bit more situational of a, of a performance upgrade. Uh, as a result of that, I think if you have a better GPU, something like RTX 3070 tier or higher, I think the very high setting is reasonable. But as we'll show off later with some other footage, I think if you have something like RTX 4060, 3060, um, RTX 2070 super-ish level, then the high setting is actually what you want here. For GI quality, now I think the game's using Lumen uh, Diffuse GI, but uh, the whole point is when you go down from cinematic to very high, there's an appreciable 9% performance uplift for almost no visual difference. Now, when you go down to high, that's when it looks like the SSGI layer seems to call as well as the detail of larger scale stuff changes. Uh, so you're going to see maybe a little bit more light leak, it looks like. Uh, here, I think, once again, if you have a bigger GPU, the very high setting, so I'm like saying RTX 3070 or better, then the very high setting is reasonable. But if you have something lower, 2070 Super, 4060, etc., 3060, then take a look at that high setting. So yeah, 
those are all the settings, the reasonable ones. And in the end, putting, using this footage from Mohammed here, of the cinematic set, you know, quality without full right. RT on versus the optimized settings using the very high for GI and reflections, there is a huge 48% win in this shot here. And this isn't even showing water, where if there was water, it would be arguably more. And I think if you look at these, other than some foliage density differences, you'd be struggling to tell the difference, I, I would say. Uh, and so I think these are very good optimized settings um, for this class of GPU. I do like the fact that they have the cinematic settings preset, which like you said, is not usually exposed. I kind of like that they have it in the game, but at the same time, I kind of feel like players might be getting a little bit of a different impression of what's realistic or what is reasonable because people are just so used to maxing out their games here. Right. Um, but yeah, I think these optimized settings look visually very, very, very similar. And obviously the performance uplift is gigantic. Yeah, it's huge. And just talking really briefly about the settings there, I think the settings menu is pretty bare and I would love to see some preview images at least, but you can at least commend them for offering settings that scale the game visually in a way that I think works really well. Uh, some Sometimes settings in games don't scale well and you're just kind of left with bad performance in some way or settings that go too far uh, quite often. And this year I feel like there's a good way to get a healthy balance essentially going down to high for a lot of things, uh, while also still getting a good looking game. So I think you've done a little bit more testing recently with a more hands-on look at the game actually running in more typical play on a mid-range PC system. So you might have some more well-optimized settings for PC gamers. Yeah, essentially uh, I did try out the settings using the very high GI and very high reflections. Uh, initially 1080p, uh, DLSS in the 68% or quality mode as it would usually be uh, there, uh, as I said, 1080p output, RTX 2070 Super. And I noticed initially that uh, the intro sequence is just so demanding when any of this, even at the, with the medium uh, uh, f kind of fog visual effects setting there, it's still so heavy, the, especially the cinematics when they come up. There's just, it's, I don't think this, intro sequence is a good way to judge your performance for the rest of the game. Getting into the rest of the game though, I did kind of find that uh, using the very high quality setting for GI and reflections on something that was RTX 2070 super tier uh, was just, I think it was like just too often in the 50s, maybe upper 40s for my liking at times, just that's the way it was. And dropping those other settings, those GI and those reflection settings down to high, put it right at the 60 hertz, 60 hertz line with V-Sync. And so I was much happier with that. And that's kind of the little takeaway I had initially with uh, Muhammad's settings there. I was thinking very high would be great uh, for most GPUs out there, but I think the lower tier, that's why I came up with this lower tier idea, two tiered settings, uh, mainly from just playing the game on an RTX 2070 Super and really appreciating it.